Was it Michael or Mitchell? <laughs> well, remember I told you about putting that uh, Crazy Carl's Magic Dust on there? On your boiled eggs? Here it is. I'm Crazy Carl. Uh, I like my shit hot. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is this is second time now. So this will be 12, 13, 14, 14 of them. Mmm. 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 Wow. Hmm. Been really looking good. Now, if you're watching, if you're watching, I put the spice part down on my tongue. Mm hmm. Mm. Hmm. 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 I don't know how much you put on your popcorn, <laughs> but this is why they call me Crazy Cow. <laughs> Tongue out. I made 25 ounces of that stuff. I should have probably give you more. But if you want more, let me know. Well, I got more for you. I actually got a buddy right now. See, he's got a cousin. His name's James. He works at the Chill Zone in Beaver Dam. And he works at the Caravan with me. Second show. He runs the, uh, in the fab department. Runs the bender machine, forming machine, from the parts, forming steel. And he's, he told me he's going to try to get a whole big bag full of them peppers. I'm like, great, awesome. I'm going to grind them all up and put them in that spice, put all that spice back together in the blender, grind them all up. And really make the stuff really hot. <laughs> really hot. Yeah. Because right now what you got is one fifth. Of that pepper you saw, that that chocolate light Bahama pepper, yeah, that's one fifth of it. One fifth. It was five bottles. Each bottle was five ounces. So that's twenty-five ounces. So that's one fifth of that pepper. You saw the pepper, right? I showed you the pepper. <laughs> that's one fifth. So. One fifth on each bottle. Well, you didn't get a whole bottle, so probably got one third. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's mixed all together. It's all the same. It's one whole pepper, but divided by five. Huh. Huh. Uh, now. Wow. I wish my dad was alive. My dad died at age 51 in June. So I outlived my dad. Because I turned 51 December 9th. 
So I was 51 in June too. That's this year of June. I was 50. I'm still 51. And I'll be 52 December 9th. I'll be 52. So I, I already outlived my dad. June, July, August, September, October, November. Five months. I outlived my dad. Five months. But he died. Bad me come running out of the woods and he's riding his Harley Sportster. Uh, it should be in the paper if you ever want to check it out. 1987, coming back from Green Bay. Now that was my dad. Okay. Got a collision with. Well, they said he didn't get in a collision. He didn't hit the deer. The deer hit him. So it's accidental. Now, if he would have hit hit the deer head on, you know, then it would have been different. But since the deer hit him from the side, more like a flipped up in the air. My dad laid flat on the ground, whatever, knocked him off, laid flat on the ground. The deer died right next to him. More like a flipped up in the air and came down on top of his head. He lived for five days in a hospital. He was six foot three, three hundred fifty pounds. And he told his brother, he says, I feel like someone's trying to kill me. And then he and then uh Gus the Greek. He, he, yeah. Gus he was Greek. Gus the Greek was riding with him when he he was following my dad when the deer ran into him and uh he just bought the harley sportster 1987 he just bought it he didn't like harley he he always was honda 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 he had seven motorcycles one for every day he was a welder in milwaukee at uh my dad worked at uh he even got me a job there when i was 18. sterling and handling equipment i took him out during springfield i think it is Super Springer, not no Springfield, I think it was. Yeah, North Side, I think that is. Way out there on the skirts. But anyways, he was still he was on vacation, coming back from Green Bay, and it happened in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Yeah. They ran right into him, and uh, he lived for five days, and and uh, my uncle, his brother, gave him a candy bar. Because you know, they were feeding them by tubes and shit. He had a broken arm and a messed up eye. You know, where the motorcycle came down on top of his head, he still lived, you know. And, um, well, there's a broken arm, broken leg, one of the two. But, uh, he was still alive, and he told his brother, he says, I'm hungry. They don't, they ain't, they're not feeding me. They're just giving me ice chips, you know. They, they got me under reservation. He was in an emergency room. And then uh, he says, why don't you go get me a candy bar? He likes Snickers candy bars, you know. So my uncle went to the vending machine, got him a candy bar. And my dad's eating it. He, he said that my dad, even though his head was smashed in, he was eating a candy bar because he was so hungry. And uh, he said he only had one eye because the other one was smashed in his head. And uh, he and, and he's like trying to, he said he was holding... The candy bar and he's trying to, he, and his brother says, yeah, there's one more bite left. And he goes, oh, thank you. And then he put it in his mouth and, and then uh, he's chewing on it and the nurse comes in and goes, hey, 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 what the hell are you doing? You can't be feeding him food. He goes, well, he's hungry. He said he hasn't eaten for five days. No, 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 you got to go. You got to get out of here. Oh, my God, you can't be feeding him food. Well, I guess the next day, maybe that did affect him. Maybe that was true. Like he said, I feel like someone's trying to kill me. Because the next day, water swelled up inside of his brain. They, well, they, the nurse figured, they figured, if he's good enough to eat a fucking candy bar, he don't need to be in intensive care. So they put him in a regular room. And then Gus the Greek, you know, he come and visit him once in a while or all the time. I don't visit him every day or whatever. And he come in the nurse's station and he goes, my friend, my friend, my friend's sleeping. Not right, not right. He don't wake up. My friend, my friend, come check my friend. And they go, calm down, sir. We'll go check on Mr. Kish because, you know, I'm the third. You know, so. 
My grandpa was the first, and my dad was the second, and I'm the third. And he goes, we'll go check on Mr. Kish. You can just calm down, you know. And he goes, no, no, my friend, my friend. You have to check my friend. There's something wrong. He's sleeping. He's not waking up. He goes, okay, you step out of the room, sir, and we'll check him out. And next thing you know, there was cold blue or whatever. And they rushed him out. And they put him back in intensive care. Because they figured, oh, he can eat a candy bar. He don't need to be in intensive care. Well, come on. What the fuck are you people thinking? A fucking motorcycle came down on top of his head. Think he has some kind of robot or Voltron or something? He's a human being. You know? Just because he eats a candy bar don't mean he's okay. So the next day, I guess, water built up inside of his brain. Cut off his blood circulation. Yeah, so they brushed him back into intensive care and then they got, got him out, Gus the Greek, got him out of the room and that, and then the closed door, locked the doors or whatever, and they started drilling holes in his head, trying to relieve the water pressure. And it was too late. His brain died. Brain dead. And then, of course, my rotten uncle, you know, they said to him, what do you, what do you want us to do with him? He goes, well, you might as well pull the plug because uh, he ain't paying for the doctor bill and he ain't got no money for it. And the sense is trying to keep him alive for nothing. So he said, go ahead and shut out the life support and let him die in peace or whatever. And he never told me and my sister he was in the hospital. Never told us. We weren't good enough, you know. And the only reason why he contacted us after he died, which is bullshit, that uh, my sister was in the will or something, and she got life insurance. And then he says, like, oh, you're supposed to take that life insurance and pay for everything, $20,000. So at first it was 10000 but since it was accidental, it made it 20000 and my uncle's all up my sister's ass saying that she needs to pay for the premium, she needs to pay for everything. They were going to give him the military, because he was in the army. They were going to pay for everything. And my uncle goes, no, that's the cheap way out. No, we're not going to do that. No. We're going to go all the way to Lux. Well, huh. They end up paying for it. My sister said, no, she's not. That's, the money was for her, and that's it. She's got three kids to support, and she needed the money. If he gave her the money, then it's good. And then this is the weird, freaky part. He donated. This is the weird, freaky part. I think the other 20000 should have went to me, you know. But he, they said that he donated 20000 to Harley Davidson to keep him running strong. That's what my dad did. That's what they say they that what my dad did. He donated the other twenty thousand to Harley Davidson. Now that's kind of fishy when he didn't like Harley Davidson. He didn't care for Harley Davidson. Look what Harley Davidson did for him. Put him in the ground. But anyways, he had the motorcycle buried next to him up on Holy Hill. If you wanna go check it out. Yeah. He's got the motorcycle buried right next to him. The Harley Sports Star. 1987. So, anyways, I would kind of wish my dad was still alive, you know, to try this stuff out. This stuff is really good. Mm. There was one time my dad was in Mexico. He liked to travel, you know. He's a Walter. He, he, good money. he traveled every summer and got to go off his first vacation, you know. Same job, 27 years in Walter. Same place, sterling equipment and handling. And uh, he come back from Mexico and he brought back these uh, cherry peppers. Cherry peppers. These little cherries. And uh, he thought those were hot. So, uh, that's half the stuff they got now. If you ever watch on YouTube, <laughs> you don't ever try this at home. 
If you can put on eggs, put just a little bit. Don't be like me. Well, look at all that spice. I hate to waste it. I'm still going to use that. No. I'll put it. No. Just some cheese. And some, some. No, I'm just do it right now. You know, just some cheese. And wipe it up like you do the bread. Trust me, this is what separates the men from the boys. Hmm. Watch. I do this all the time, so I do not recommend anybody to do this because uh, I won't be responsible for somebody going to the hospital for trying to do the shit that I do. Mm -hmm. The shit I do ain't normal. See all that? Ah. It's just like eating pepper jack cheese. Does it ever have pepper jack cheese? <laughs> Trust me, this is a lot hotter. Look at that. Just look at that. See that? Mmm. 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 I have a little bit of it. I'm a hungry guy and I don't like to waste food. Mmm. 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 Ha ha ha. Mmm. It's actually good. Ha ha ha. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, I can feel it now. What a rock. Mmm. What a rock. You only got a 54 inch chest. I measured it. 54 inches. Oh my god. I'm 235 pounds. Hey man. You know what I like to do, fella? I like to eat. <laughs> yeah, I like to eat. That's why I'm so big. Okay. Wow, 19 minutes, 48 seconds. 29, 50. Okay, this goes to a shout out to uh, Mitch McGrath. McGrath, what is it? Okay. Happy Thanksgiving. 
Bye.